Well, we are going to bring in Yahoo Finance's Rick Newman to talk about what is happening next here and the potential impact this could have. Rick, thanks so much for joining us. Obviously, a very unexpected weekend in terms of the developing events for both campaigns here. What is your initial reaction? What are you hearing from folks who you speak with about the change that this could have, particularly as we enter this week at the RNC, what change it could have, an impact it could have on the tenor of conversations at the convention? I think it's going to certainly change things this week, next week. Uh, I'm not sure how much of a difference this makes long term in the uh, in the overall political campaign, but a couple things we know are going to be different this week. First of all, the Biden campaign has pulled a big package of ads that were supposed to attack Trump uh, and really try to counter program the uh, Republican convention. So that is not going to be happening. Uh, and Trump has a whole new narrative here. I mean, uh, it, it's, it's really kind of unbelievable how, how this uh, failed assassination attempt actually plays into Trump's narrative of the candidate who is under attack. Uh, now he's literally under attack, and mm -hmm. um, we, we, he is playing it really well, I have to say. I mean, he had the presence of mind to stick his fist up in the air while, he was, while the Secret Service was stuffing him into a car on Saturday, uh, what we just talked about. Um, he's now saying, I was going to take a couple of days to recover, but now I'm not going to let anything stop me. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he could not have scripted this better himself, to be honest. I'm, I'm not saying he did script it. I'm not one of the conspiracy wackos out there. Uh, but it's going to, for sure, change the tenor of the campaign this week, and, it, and it's going to change what uh, anybody who actually is tuning into the Republican conve convention is likely to see. I mean, Trump has, has superhero status among his supporters now. Yeah, you know, even the non-conspiracy wackos out there <laughs> uh, had enough fodder for conversation as stage was trending on X over the weekend. We saw that. We also know that this shifts towards the convention, this shifts towards who he might pick mm -hmm. as his VP candidate, what are the estimations? What's the calculus there? I mean, I guess we have four people, uh, and nobody knows what the you know what Trump's thinking. I mean, Trump Trump possibly made up his mind a long time ago, but he's been milking this for all the publicity he can get. It's Doug Burgum, uh, the uh, uh, governor of North Dakota, Marco Rubio, the senator from Florida, uh, could be somebody else. Um, but it, watch one of those guys. We're, so, what's going to happen with the vice presidential pick? It's going to be a 24-hour news story, and then I'm not sure uh, too many people are going to care. And, for, and just uh, to put some context on this, I mean, a lot of Americans are on vacation. Um, they're not going to watch the Republican convention. They're not going to watch the Democratic convention. Um, certainly, everybody has heard about the assassination attempt on Donald Trump. That a lot of people are just not paying detailed attention to this, and they won't be until September or maybe October. So, um, you know, we've had two surprises uh, in this election so far. One is Biden's moribund debate performance on June 27, although some people say that they weren't that surprised. Two, now the second one is an assassination attempt on Donald Trump. We could have more surprises. Um, that There is more volatility, more uh, likelihood of something unexpected happening in this race than I think you would ever, you would normally have in a presidential election. Oh, Rick, that volatility is exactly what we're going to continue to talk about, particularly in terms of the market impact. So thank you for teeing that up for us and joining us. We appreciate it, as always.